Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Midday Live from the News Hub here at Adesawa in Kandakra. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Top of the bulletin. Police in Agunaswedu Mount search for a 33 year old woman for allegedly stealing a baby. Also, residents of Kenya say Achia say receiving death threats following arrest of kidnappers of two Canadians in the area. On the international front, US military releases videos showing Iranian special forces removing an unexploded mine from side of an oil tanker damaged in an attack in the Gulf of Oman on Thursday. Details of these stories and more coming up now. To our very first story this afternoon, the NDC has provided some audiovisuals purporting that some of the suspects arrested in connection with the kidnapping of two Canadian girls are NPP activists denying allegations from some NPP officials that the alleged leader of the suspect is an NDC member. The National Communications Officer, Sami Jemfi, insisted Seydou Yakubu, Abdul Rahman, Sadat Aboy, and Safianu Alkere are known NPP activists in Kumasi, a report by Godfrey Tanam. Now, let's still stay in the Ashanti region where some residents at Kenyasi at Chiasi in the Ashanti region are reported to be receiving death threats days after some alleged kidnappers were arrested in the area. One woman who has been a target after speaking to the media had to relocate for fear of attack. Another thing, Sector Bureau Chief Kofi Edu Domfe joins us live on Skype from the Ashanti region for more. So, Kofi, tell us, is there a sense of insecurity in the Ashanti region? Well, good afternoon to you, Grace. So, uh, the security situation in the area is actually twofold. Uh, first, there are artisans uh, like basins and uh, carpenters who are uh, engaged in construction activities in, in the area. And some of them are temporarily accommodated in um, some uncompleted buildings and other uh, makeshift uh, structures. These and um, other residents of um, Achiansi uh, fear they may be targeted uh, should the police move in for any uh, mop-up operation that's for possible accomplices in, in, in this uh, uh, kidnapping operation. So for these people, uh, the, the, there is a sense of insecurity based on them being targeted as suspects uh, for uh, arrest. Then there is this second group of residents who fear uh, that allies of the kidnappers uh, who were arrested will target them uh, for harm. And for this reason, there is a call for police protection. And also the media has also been cautioned uh, to be circumspect in, in exposing uh, individuals who volunteer information on incidents uh, that led to the uh, rescue operation. Hello, Grace. Yes, Kofi, I'm asking what we know about the ownership of the house where the kidnappers held their victims. Have we had somebody coming up to claim ownership of the house? Okay, so, so this two-bedroom house is said to be owned by a man who is currently uh, based in uh, Mauritania. Interestingly, he, he only got to know uh, that his house, uh, that was actually his house after the rescue operation. And, and the person who had been contracted to build a house is said to have sent a photograph to, to, to the man of, of a different house and ostensibly to deceive him of the stage of the project. So it's not clear if he will return home after this incident. So the owner is currently not in the country and is based in Mauritania. But has it been declared as a security zone so that it can help the police with investigations? I mean, are people prevented from gaining access to the place or it's open? So as at um, midday, uh, let's say 11 uh, a.m. yesterday when I was around the area, the place had not been cordoned. But just when um, myself and the team were leaving the scene, a team of uh, CID and um, other security personnel were in the area and they later cordoned off uh, the place. So as, as we speak now, the place has been cordoned and uh, the police uh, have gone into further investigation. Okay, so away from Kenya, so we know that TV3 office is at Asqua and let's look at this general mood in Asqua and the surrounding environs. Do they have the same feeling as that of Kenya? 
And Nasukwa is also not too far from Ahojo, where uh, the two uh, Canadians were abducted. And uh, this uh, abduction, the, the Canadian abduction episode comes a month after a similar incident involving an Indian businessman. So there is the general public concern that the security apparatus mm. should work at preventing such kidnapping acts rather than going on a rescue mission. All right. Thank you very much for speaking. Officer Sami Jemfi insisted Seydou Yakubu, Abdul Rahman, Sadat Oboi, and Safianu Alkeri are known NPP activists in Kumasi. A report by Godfrey Tenam. The communication officer of the NDC, Sami Jemfi, from this audio claims Sedu Yakubu, the leader of the suspected kidnappers, in February admitted in an interview with the Kumasi Bay station Fox FM he was an MPP activist and the brain behind the formation of an MPP fan club in Kumasi, denying a claim by some officials of the MPP that the alleged ringleader of the suspects is an NDC member. This Seydou is not just the founder of the MPP's fan club in Abu Abu, but he's an active member of the MPP's, the dreaded Delta Force of the MPP in, the, in Kumase. And everybody in Kumase knows this. You see, but because of how deceitful and vicious our brothers in the MPP are, they are disowning him. A video footage was also played where a gentleman, the NDC believes is said to Yakubu, was arguing with police officers. One Abdul Rahman Suleiman was mentioned as the owner of the car used for the abduction and he superimposed a picture which he claimed was Abdul Rahman with the vice president. Another Sadat Oboe was identified as a member of the Delta Force in Aswasi and Sufiano Alokeri, another suspect, came up as a motorcycle mechanic and a member of the NPP. Sami Jemfi expressed shock at the information minister's Kojo Ponkrumah's comments that the identity of the alleged kidnappers should not be revealed to prevent compromising with investigations. The Minister of Information said that government is unable to disclose the identities of the arrested suspects because he may undermine ongoing investigations. When I heard him say that, I was shocked. I said, who is this man trying to deceive? Already the pictures of these suspects are all over social media. So what are you hiding? He added the party's chairman, Samuel Ofusu Ampofu, has been demonized and requested the CID to look within the NPP for the troublemakers in the country. Their evil agenda against the NDC and its chairman has backfired terribly. We now know who the real kidnappers are. Instead of Tiwa Dodankwa and Apiatu to focus on this innocent man, they shouldn't look far at all. They should look into the new patriotic party. Elsewhere in Parliament, members there have asked leadership of the House to strengthen the level of security in Parliament. The call comes on the heel of a botched suicide attempt by a middle-aged man. First Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Joe Osewusu has meanwhile blamed the breaches of security in the House on members of Parliament who themselves fail to cooperate with that security. Uh, went on recess, uh, uh, not not recess though. Um, when the house closed its session yesterday, there was a suicide attempt uh, by a 35-year-old man from the Kwesimintim uh, constituency, Kujo Mensa, who apparently said that he has been trying to seek audience from uh, his MP, but he has uh, been unsuccessful at it. It's been quite a hectic one for him, he recalls. These are stories that he's been telling the security officials here in Parliament yesterday who had arrested him after that botched suicide attempt. But this morning, the security situation in Parliament has been a bit heightened up a bit. Uh, on your entry into the yard, if you're coming, let's say, from the state house side, the uh, 
security men are there, manned by the police, doing a thorough check of both MPs and then visitors. If you're coming from the conference center side, it's the same thing as well. But when you get, uh, when you get towards the first car park, the state house car park, there is a barricade. The policemen are there, about three of them. They have to search you. If you're an MP, they search your car. If you are a visitor, you are still searched before you go and park at the car park. If you are walking towards the chamber area, you would be searched as well. When you get uh, a bit towards the chamber, still the same thing. There are about three different stages of security check before you get very close to the main entrance into the building that contains the Parliament House. Well, some members of the House of Mary recounting what happened yesterday. Uh, they have been asking the leadership of the House to uh, look at the security situation. As a matter of fact, there is a suggestion that there is a breakdown of security within Parliament. Uh, the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, uh, Joe Say, uh, Jose Wusu has disagreed to a large extent about it, but then there is a need, as uh, he, he puts it, the leadership of the House should look at uh, how they will be able to strengthen the security and the level of check that is given to both members of the House and then also uh, 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 visitors who come in. Let me engage the Member of Parliament for Bulsa South, the Honorable. Um, Clement Abakam, uh, Dr. Clement Apak. You better Doc, say my name I, right. I, I know, I mean, it's been Very well, back it's and understandable. Forth. Yes, yes, but Dr. Apak, uh, will you say that there's a breakdown in security here in Parliament? Well, I, I, I would say so uh, if we were speaking yesterday, uh, largely because what occurred yesterday shouldn't have occurred and uh, it wasn't the only incident as uh, you heard me make my comment on the floor we have had good reason to complain sometimes you are in your office and suddenly people come in there trying to sell you donuts and all kinds of products and you wonder how they got access to job 600 and how they got access uh, to to your office sometimes the elevators that are supposed to be designated for only mps you find persons who are not members of parliament, they are not even parliamentary staff, or some of our research assistants using the same elevators. So what happened yesterday is a wake-up call for all of, all of us. Mm. Yeah, it is true that uh, security seems to have been beefed, as you indicated, with uh, the multiple checkpoints that you have identified. But did we have to wait? for what occurred yesterday to occur for security in parliament Definitely to be heightened. Deputy Speaker, I mean, after the question was posed in the House by the Honorable something, he wanting the leadership or the House to apprise um, members of the House on what happened yesterday and what steps they are going to take to mitigate such occurrences. The first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Jose, also blamed colleague MPs as well for allowing some of these people entry to, to, to a very large extent, he said that some MPs have not even been cooperative with the security. Well, that is a subject to debate. Uh, if we take the instance of yesterday, I don't think that had to do with an MP allowing the said 35-year-old gentleman who threatened to commit suicide. As uh, you have ri uh, rightly reported, uh, he came to see his MP, and he has the right to come here. Uh, so do every Ghanaian. But we must make sure that those who come don't come here to harm themselves or to cause harm to other Ghanaian citizens, including members of parliament. So yes, we must agree that security is a responsibility of all of us, both the security agencies and service personnel, as well as members of parliament. And indeed, uh, if it is the case that some MPs are guilty of what the first deputy speaker narrated, they should also be up and doing, because by not doing lay down security procedures and protocol, what we are then doing is to endanger ourselves as members of parliament and members of the public who come here legitimately, lawfully, to engage with their members what of parliament. Do expect, what do you expect to change immediately and going forward in terms of security arrangements within the house and even outside of it? Well, what we are seeing uh, is a uh, refreshing, and I am hoping that, uh, you know, Commander Freeman Tete my own former student at the University of Ghana, 
uh, and his men will sustain uh, the posture that we saw this morning. And you see, it is important to let the people know that the arrangements have changed because of the larger challenges that we believe we are facing as a nation with regards to security arrangements generally. And this is obviously a target. So anyone who means to do harm to the good people of this country, targeting parliament, and the way it was yesterday, clearly would have gotten away with it. And we, we would have borne the consequences. The yes, you complained at the point in time about the level of rigorous check that, uh, that you were subjected to. Do you think as a measure, uh, members of parliament themselves should be subjected to that rigorous check just as the public? Well, I, I think that because we work here, and this is our environment, it clearly would not be too much to ask that the level of scrutiny of members of parliament should be the same as members of the public who are not MPs. You never know anybody's yes. intention. Yes, this is not to say yeah. that there couldn't be an aberration. Mm -hmm. But the point I'm making is that even if that was the case, this should have commenced mm -hmm. before yesterday's incident. Mm -hmm. But be as it may, uh, better late than never. We are now seeing that the security personnel uh, have taken up the challenge, and we would also do our best to complement their effort mm. by doing what we know we should do mm. and not doing what would promote indiscipline and insecurity in as far as the presence of uh, parliament are concerned. All right. Many thanks to you, Dr. Clementa, uh, Clementa Park. You want to say I don't know, name, Abbas Abbas yeah, right. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Clement Abassina Abassina Park is a member of parliament for Bulsu South. And well, I mean, Luce, um, just like he has indicated, the security situation within the parliament area uh, has gone up a little bit. But the expectation of parliament is that uh, members of the public would cooperate with them as they are trying to put in the measures now to. Uh, prevent any future occurrence for somebody entering into the house to commit any crime whatsoever. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Parliament Accra. And in the studio, my name is Grace Hamwa Asai. So if you're wondering what happened yesterday that's making the members of parliament call for intensified security, then a 35-year-old man was arrested after attempting to commit suicide in parliament. The man, identified as Kojo Mensa, was restrained by security personnel after trying to jump from the public gallery. A man from Kwesimini team in the Western region had sat through parliamentary proceedings on Thursday. But just when the speaker agent for the day, he got up from his seat and attempted to jump from the public gallery into the main chamber. Officers from Parliament's protection unit in the chamber quickly moved in to foil his intended action. He was transferred to the ministry's police station. Commander of the Parliament Protection Unit, Superintendent Freeman Teti said, a criminal investigation has begun into his conduct. We have a very solid security arrangement, so I don't think it will change anything at all. These are the challenges as police officers we face. The reason why we are here is to handle security within an immediate out of parliament. So that is our responsibility, and we are doing it very well. It's a criminal case that is being taken care of by the police. So details can only be given by the Ministry of Police. And we are referring the case to the Ministry of Police Station to conduct investigation. Vice Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Defense and the Interior, Colin Sowuzwa Mankwa is of the view the incident was an attempt to bring the image of the legislature into disrepute. It's not done anywhere. And we are not supposed to come here with party colors. And the fact that the young man was wearing, I mean, party colors, it tells you that it was well orchestrated just to embarrass parliament and for that matter, the state. It is unclear why he attempted suicide.
Still in Parliament, First Deputy Speaker of Parliament Joseph Osewusu has questioned the integrity of members of the House who are marked as having attended Parliament even when they fail to do so without permission. He said he has had reason to strike out the names of about 15 of such MPs. Of Parliament have continuously raised concerns about the poor attendance to the House despite its heavy workload. Ningo Pram Pram MP Samuel Net George, during the correction of votes and proceedings for the previous day, expressed strong reservations about the manipulation of Parliament's register. This is an honorable House of Parliament. Can we all be truthful to ourselves that if and to God that if you take today's vote and proceedings? The names marked present were really present, were really present in this chamber. There are, or even at committees, there are some names that we can mention here that appear present every day. Here. We've never seen them here. Even State of the Nation has they don't even attend. Yes. It is a fact. And I'm saying yet names appear here. So is it that there is a way to get yourself marked present in the male room? Even when you are not present, maybe as a first time member of parliament, I have not been initiated. Commenting on the development, first Deputy Speaker of Parliament Joseph Osei Wusu said the practice is unacceptable and advised MPs to desist from it. The complaint now is there are so many members whose names appear as present, whose ne faces never show anywhere. As I just went through, I have marked about 15 from the record of yesterday that I did not see anywhere. They don't belong to the committees which were in meeting yesterday. I know for a fact. How did their names get onto our record? That is what the Honorable Member for Kaikui Central talked about. It borders on our integrity and I think it is important that we do not give room for people to doubt our integrity. Away from Parliament, the Aguna Suedro Domestic Victim and Violence Support Units of the Ghana Police Service in the Central Region has mounted search for a 33-year-old woman for allegedly stealing a baby. The suspect, Patricia Gordo, is said to have stolen a nine-month baby boy of the head pastor of the Salvation House of Prayer Ministry, James Ayesu in Aguna Suedro. Narrating the incident to TV3 off camera, the station officer for the Aguna Suedro Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit's Chief Inspector Philip Arthur said the suspect Patricia Godo, who is a stranger, had gone to visit the pastor in his residence on Sunday morning, claiming to be a native of Achim Etreso, where the pastor also comes from, and offered to join the pastor and his family in their Sunday morning church service. Chief Inspector Philip Arthur added the pastor's wife left the baby in the care of his siblings, including a 14-year-old foster child after they, together with the suspect, had closed from church where the suspect, Patricia Godo, took the baby and his 7-year-old sister under the pretense of buying them food and bolted with a 9-month baby, leaving the 7-year-old girl at a lorry station in Aguna Suedru. The couple, after coming home and sensing danger, searched for them only to find their 7-year-old daughter at a lorry station alone. Police investigations revealed the suspect, Patricia Godo, is an ex-convict. She is said to have committed a similar offence in Achimoda, in the eastern region where she was arrested and given a one-year jail term in 2018. She was released at the Nsawan prison on Saturday, June 8, 2019, and allegedly went to Agna Swedu to steal the baby. Now, nearly a week after Ghana Standards Authority published a list of fuel stations caught in adjusting their palms to cheat customers, some affected stations are yet to correct the anomaly. A follow-up inspection revealed some of the OMCs continue to breach standard regulatory requirements. According to the Ghana Standards Authority, 12 out of the 65 retail outlets inspected flouted some regulations. The follow-up inspection by Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana 
Kopek to seven of the fuel stations along the Malam Kaswa portion of the N1 revealed Goyle at mile seven and Goyle at Galilea have their pumps working well and dispensing the right amount of fuel above the minimum level. GSA reported that they had issues with two of our uh, uh, stations and according to them they verified and had um, uh, a notice that the levels were, were below what is expected. That is the media report we have received. Officially, they have not notified us yet. Because their machines we are not disputing the claims by GSA because we are using machines. We do weekly checks with a 10 liter can to ensure value for money. We quickly resolved the challenge when we heard it from the media. We spoke to a customer. Because of this up and down, up and down, today they've increased it, tomorrow they've decreased it. You can't actually monitor what you are doing. Goodness Energy at Kaswa did not have the 10 liter can, which oil marketing companies are required by law to have at the dispensing area. The shell at Amam from West also did not have the 10 liter can. The 10 liter can is used to measure whether or not a station is dispensing the right quantity of fuel to customers. The right quantity must not be below the minimum limit, which is the minus 0.5 mark. Frames Oil, located at Tetegu Junction, whose pumps were dispensing below the minimum level, was an issue of pricing and quantity mechanism, which they promised to resolve. Executive Secretary of COPEC, Duncan Amua, explains the dynamics. Surprisingly, however, when you add the difference that they have given on the price, you even get more quantity from them. And we are saying that the, the, the calibration should be done again. So that if it's five CD ten pesos, it's five CDs ten pesos, and I can get the quantity that I deserve. The total at Makati Hill has its pumps dispensing fuel with the right quantity. The pumps at the Allied Oil at Sakaman were dispensing fuel below the minimum requirement, but promised to have the pumps fixed by close of day June 13. A customer did not know about the ten litre can. There should be an education going on, not on me, my part. For now, me, I've known what's the best. But the way forward is to nationwide education so that we'll never be get uh, half a liter short by what we buy. Duncan Amua called on the Ghana Standards Authority to collaborate with the OMC. Uh, one would have suggested that the stations or the OMCs would have been briefed on the adverse findings made by the GSA against them. Uh, and probably be given a window to clarify or sort those issues out. Uh, you find a problem or two, at least give them a window uh, so that they can correct those problems and be able to deliver. As and when uh, you caution and you come back and it's the same thing, I think at that point, if the station will have to be closed down, it should be closed down completely. Time now for MTN Video Report and our citizen journalist Safia Moklu reports on the collapse of Nkrumah Memorial School fence caused by recurring floods in Accra New Town. This school by name Kwame Nkrumah Memorial School, their fence wall has collapsed. This area has been known for uh, floods. Uh, with a heavy gutter between the wall and several houses. I want to call on our Metro Department and Accra uh, Metropolitan Assemblies to take note of these happenings. The Sefia reporting for Newton. You can also send us your video reports via WhatsApp on 055 You're watching Media Live on TV3. We're back with more after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. In business this afternoon, the startup SME Centers Ghana says government's $50 million allocation to the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program to support startups and SMEs to expand is inadequate. The president of the group, Nelson Godfrey Ajiman, spoke to reporter Frederick Clarence Williams. 
In 2017, government allocated $50 million to the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program to support SMEs with funding to expand their businesses to enable them employ more workers. Government also introduced a tax holiday of three to five years for entrepreneurs aged 35 years and below based on the productivity of their companies and the number of workers they employ. However, the startup SME Centers Ghana says government's efforts to boost the sector is inadequate. If we want to develop as an economy, as a country, we have to prioritize this area. And if we collect euro bonds for various sectors, which are less in value according to the statistics than this sector, then we better focus on uh, getting euro bonds and other syndicated instruments and guarantees for this sector so that it will grow and provide more jobs for our population. The group says it deserves more since it contributes about 80% of the gross domestic product. The sectors that the government um, uh, put the euro bonds in are important. But if you want to be comparative, the most important sector that can have wider impact on poverty, on our economic development, and that is neglected and doesn't have the required financing. Because the biggest problem of the sector, startups and SMEs, is the lack of financing. So you want to prioritize that over all the other sectors. The group called on government as a matter of agency to adopt policies and programs to create a conducive environment for the private sector to thrive. The private sector is capable of managing any resources that are guaranteed for it. It has enough capacity to handle business and money. Most of the times, the financing programs that we have given to private sector, for that matter, startups and SMEs, are managed by the public sector. And the public sector does not know how to run business. Civil service training does not include the running of business. Let's go to the ports now, where management of Meridian Ports and Services says the 11% increase in port charges was agreed on with the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority four years ago. Head of legal, Ebo Brown, in an interview, ruled out any further increase in the cost of doing business at the ports. Per the contract signed in 2015, NPS is expected to take charge of Terminal 3 operations with GPHA having 30% shares in the business. The 11% increment in port tariffs, including Marine, Steve Dawes and Shaw Hanlin, was a provision in the concessional agreement which will last for 35 years. It was agreed that over a period of time, there would be a tariff increase you know, to be able to pay for the facilities. That notwithstanding, if you look at the question of increment alone in terms of tariffs, you'll be missing the question because this port is bringing in efficiency to cut out a lot of costs. We've seen publications which tend to or portend to you know, indicate that um, the cost of doing business will rise in the port. That cannot be true. The head of legal for NPS, Ebo Brown, underscored the need for further stakeholder engagement. A lot of money is locked up on the sea and in the ports because traders go, they are importing items or they're exporting items because there's no direct connectivity. These things have to wait for a month. Or he's gone for a loan. He's paying the bank interest and he has to wait for months or you know, weeks upon weeks before getting his cargo in. And it takes a lot of days before clearing. We are cutting out all this inefficiency by creating connectivity. He dismissed the assertion that MPS is taking over GPH's role as stated in the PNDC law 601 in 1986, which gives GPHA the power to build, operate a port and set new fees and charges. From June 28, the new terminal will be operational and business players and port users are expected to experience a new technology to reflect international best practices. 
That's all we have for business. Well, and that's it for the bulletin. Many thanks for joining us. Log on to 3news.com and get some other stories. My name is Grace Hamwasari. Good afternoon.